I'm seeing the beauty of the freaking. This has been done before by some people. Rufus now has. It just lets you only use. Look at this. This PC cannot run Windows 11. Rufus, you didn't work! Boom! Take my computer apart. This bad boy again. This is gonna be perfect for our thumbnail shot. I wonder how my viewers reacted when I when they saw the thumbnail. Absolute garbage! So if you don't remember or if you don't know, back in December of 2021, I made a video installing Windows 11 on a netbook with 2 gigabytes of RAM, an Atom N455, and a Seagate 250 gigabyte hard drive. This video was a complete and total disaster, and I don't know how did it end up on YouTube. Why did I even premiere it anyway? Why, why, why? I swear to God, late 2021 was a pretty trash period for me. But yeah, let's get away from the past and go to the present. It's 2023 and I got better since then. Let's get straight to installing Windows 11 on this thing. Let's put a computer up. Alright, so this thing is a very old 2010 laptop. It's an EPC 101 PXD with an Atom CPU N455, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and it's a 64-bit CPU. These don't sound enough for Windows 11, but we're gonna try and install it anyway. Some people have tried to install Windows 11 on netbooks that have 1 gigabyte of RAM only, and yeah, it kind of turned into a disaster. But we're here to max out this laptop and see if the experience would be a bit better. But I still think that it will be complete garbage. I'm gonna be using this old Team Group L7 EVO SSD that is 120 gigabytes and is from 2016. It's not the fastest SSD, but this is the SSD I use for testing anyway. And it should be a good enough SSD for this laptop because yeah, we're gonna be having bottlenecks and such and an SSD like that is plenty enough for that laptop, even though I don't recommend you put an SSD on those things because, yeah, those items are not good. Alright, let's unplug this laptop, flip it over, and eject the battery, which is pretty easy because the tabs broke off. This thing has no screws, so my entry should be pretty easy. Now I need to find some flathead screwdriver. Let's use this big boy. I probably need to replace that because I've lost the bits. Push those tabs. Hoping the keyboard will lift. Oh, there it is. The keyboard lifted. And now we push those tabs outwards. There we go. You know, I fear taking apart this netbook because I fear that I will break the keyboard, which I already did back in the day. To upgrade it to an SSD, which will be purely only for the page filing that Windows 11 is gonna do. Now we have access to the drive. Let's remove this ribbon cable. Let's remove that drive. Up, oh, there we go. Time to install that SSD. I'm pretty sure I have a copy of Windows 10 already installed, which will make my life match much easier. Put that cable back. There we go. This thing keeps floating. That's how light that laptop is. I'm not sure if this is even outlast Chromebox in terms of quality. I don't even have or own a Chromebook. All right, let's test it out and see if it boots. I'm pretty sure I have Windows 10 already installed in that thing, so it should boot with no problem. Unless, of course, it's 32-bit. Since I don't feel like using this, using the keyboard that it's into the system, I'm gonna be using this old trust keyboard from my old computer. Plug that thing in. Alright, so I had to prepare some stuff because of course it was missing the drivers. It's still missing the audio drivers because I didn't even install them. So, yeah. Currently we experienced just complete garbage, but that's because, yeah, Windows 10 being Windows 10. And I'm gonna disable those things to see if the performance will improve. Uh, nope. Because Windows 10 is being Windows 10, even the basics lag. I mean, look. Look at this. All right, let's install Windows 11 anyway, but first we need to bring WinRAR and do some modifications to the installer. 
Actually, what I'm saying, I can mount the image like inserting a disc onto the DVD drive. Okay, so we mounted the image to our desktop. Now we have to copy over all of the files from the ISO and paste them onto a folder called Windows 11 and then modify the app whatever thing in order to trick the installer that this machine checks all of the requirements while well, it's not. I mean, it will bypass all of the things that have to do with, you know, secure boot, CSM, the RAM amount, the CPU, and the RAM. That's what it's gonna bypass, if I'm not mistaken. And now, it's time to uh, double click on the folder, run the setup, and pray for it to not show any compa compatibility issues. Alright, good news, we bypassed it. Okay, let's let the computer do its job and get back to it once it finishes. Okay, finally we're here. It took forever just to check for updates on the installer, but yeah. At least it didn't fail. Let's install and hope for the best. Alright, let's leave it do its thing. We're back, and as you can see, the laptop finally finished upgrading to Windows 11. Now let's go to how it is the actual experience like. Well, first off, there's a task manager. It took like almost an entire minute. Terrible. I wonder why. Well, first off, we don't try to have super hybrid engine open. That's one problem. Second, I don't know what's doing, updates in the background or something? As we see host and task manager. What? Task manager consuming 20, 26-29% of the CPU, that's not normal. Maybe that's because it's running the updated one. Okay. Alright, you know, I'm just gonna leave this thing alone because I think it's doing its own crap. So I guess I'm gonna have to leave it alone until tomorrow. So yeah. Okay, so I'm back and I finally finished everything. Let's see how the experience is like. So, first off, the experience is as bad as Windows 10. But because it has to deal with less things, instead of having to deal with live tiles and such on Windows 10, it has to deal with icons and such, but still, because of how weak this system's graphics is and probably even the processor inside it, it still tugs. So let's try and optimize it. Alright, now what? So the usability is just, you know, dragging things after optimizing that thing for a bit for that thing is quite acceptable. But let's see if it can handle the basics and then we'll just go crazy. First Chrome. And the fan is already ramping up. YouTube. The keyboard does seem to work now for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with it. That keyboard is pretty weird, man. Man, browsing the internet with that thing is slow. Painfully slow. It's like trying to open Microsoft Word on a school computer. Come on. You can do it. It's like a failing hard drive. Yeah, it's pretty laggy. Alright, so this video is at 360p. Let's play it. The only way for me was to avoid him.
right it's past the video test but because this thing is a really weak computer at 480p it will lag and at 70 and at 720p will struggle based on past experiences with that thing all right i told you that we're gonna go crazy so let's just try and load roblox <laughs> Garbage. I learned what I wanted to learn, and now it's time to get the verdict. So, verdict. Can you run Windows 11 on a netbook that has an Atom N455, even though you upgraded it to a solid state drive and two gigabytes of RAM? Well, you can, but I don't recommend it. Why? It's too slow for that. I mean, this computer is too slow that even the lock screen takes forever to load. So, yeah. And because of how slow Windows 11 is on a netbook like this one, I would not recommend you install Windows 11 on a netbook like this one. I'm not sure about those higher-end Atom D525 netbooks, but I'm pretty sure they might run Windows 11 properly, because yeah, they have a faster Atom and also those NVIDIA Ion graphics, but I have no idea about the DirectX feature support, so I have no idea. But yeah, it also has its pros, like for example, it doesn't have to deal with live tiles and such, but the cons are very high, so I would not recommend you install Windows 11 on a computer like this one. Anyways, now that we're done with Windows 11 on a netbook like this one, it's time to get into the painstaking process of reverting it back to Windows 10. Leave me alone Windows 11, you don't belong on this notebook. Not even Windows 10, Windows 7 belongs on that thing. Or even Windows 8.1. Running Windows 11 on an Atom is a huge no.